Hello, Houston. Hello, America. I am so pleased to be in Houston today with all of you and with the Prime Minister. And with all of you, I will be keeping my thoughts with all those affected by the terrible flooding that has occurred here in Houston. We pray for them. We think of them. I pray for their safety and thank all those who have reached out in kindness and in courage on their behalf. Like all of you, I'm honored to join in welcoming Prime Minister Modi to the United States. To the United States, of which, of course, we in Maryland think Houston is a part. Mr. Prime Minister, I then bring greetings from the Congress and from our Speaker, Nancy Pelosi. I am glad to be here with many old friends and many thousands of new ones. We have come here for the same purpose, to celebrate the growing partnership between India and America two democracies committed to the same vision of the future. That vision, as all of us know, is based on the common hopes and the shared dreams of our people. Both nations shaped by the legacy of British colonialism. Both nations deeply cognizant of the price of freedom. We hold the same truths to be self-evident, that all are created equal, endowed by their creator with the same right to strive for a better life, a vision yet to be realized in either of our two great nations completely. Our constitutions begin with the same three words, we the people. The father of Indian independence, Mahatma Gandhi, whose 150th birthday we mark on October 2nd, once defined democracy as, and I quote Mahatma Gandhi, something that gives the weak, the same chance as the strong. That, my friends, at its heart is what the ideal of American democracy and Indian democracy are all about. An equal opportunity to dream, and work hard to make that dream come true. I'm proud, as all of you are, that the U.S.-India relationship has remained bipartisan with both Democrats and Republicans working to bring the two nations closer in pursuit of that goal and our common principles. In recent decades, President Clinton had the vision to forge a new path for U.S.-India relations. President Bush, where was he from? President Bush <laughs> strengthened the ties between our two nations. And President Obama solidified them. And President Trump continues that effort today. Twenty-five years since the founding of the Congressional Caucus on India and Indian Americans. The United States and India cooperate 
in every way imaginable, from counterterrorism and clean energy to defense and space exploration, we are now working together in ways no one could have envisioned a decade ago. In 2008, Congress passed the Civil Nuclear Agreement, and in 2016, established India as a major defense partner. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud of Congress's role in forging these closer ties, as I am to serve aside wonderful Indian-American congressional representatives. You've seen some of them introduced, like Raja Krishnamurthy, Pramila Jayapal, Ami Bera, and Ro Khanna. And I'm proud to serve along the other members of Congress who were introduced here. The heart, the heart of our relationship remains the people-to-people -people ties that bring us even closer. The Indian Americans who are making such an extraordinary, such an extraordinary contribution to America. Thank you. You and millions of other Indian Americans are the reason why the U.S.-India relationship continues to strengthen and remains bipartisan. You are the reasons why so many Americans now look to India and see not only a partner, but also a trusted friend. Throughout this country, Indian Americans have built strong diaspora communities that have opened their arms to their neighbors. They've given back through service as doctors, teachers, artists, researchers, entrepreneurs, lawyers, engineers, and in every sector of our economy and American life. Mr. Prime Minister, they are making a difference in America. And, of course, they serve in our military and in our government. In every field, Indian Americans have brought insight, intellect, innovation, and, yes, inspiration. Most importantly, they have worked to broaden their fellow Americans' understanding of India, its history, its traditions, and the vibrancy of its democracy. Ladies and gentlemen, I've experienced this firsthand in my county that we call St. Mary's County. That county has been enriched by a growing Indian American community. My next door neighbor, Dr. Vinod Shah and Dr. Ela Shah, who are here today with me and with the Prime Minister, have become dear and trusted friends they are extraordinarily respected and beloved members of our community. I am part of their family, and they are part of mine. I have traveled to India with my friend Vinny Shah. What an extraordinary country. What an extraordinary people. And it's through them that I've met so many other Indian Americans and learned about Gujarat and India, its people, its history, and about the challenges and successes of Indian American community here in the United States. On behalf of all of us, I want to thank the thousands of Indian Americans who have made a difference in America. What you have done to build closer relationships between two great countries, two great democracies, and for all you do to make America a better and stronger nation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as we welcome Prime Minister Modi to Texas, we are inspired by the modern India he leads while mindful of the challenges it faces. Undeterred as it reaches into the new frontier of space, 
and equally determined to lift millions out of poverty back on Earth, making strides in access to education, clean water, health care, and while helping to lead in developing advanced energy technologies for a greener and healthy India. And like America, proud of its ancient traditions to secure a future according to Gandhi's teaching and Nehru's vision of India as a secular democracy where respect for pluralism and human rights safeguard every individual. America and India must strive to make our promises and aspirations a reality for all our citizens. On the eve of independence, Nehru praised Gandhi's mission to, and I quote, a quote that all of you surely know, wipe every tear from their eye. And they made a pledge for India's future that so long as there are tears and suffering, so long our work will not be over. And in that sense, the work of our countries is not over. As he took his oath for office for the final time, Abraham Lincoln called for malice towards none and charity for all. He asked his fellow Americans, and I quote, to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. Together, together, we the people of India and of America must and will continue to motivate one another and the world to pursue the vision of peace, justice, charity for all, to strive malice towards none, and to wipe every tear from every eye. For those of us For those of us born in America, or India, or the sons and daughters of those who were, that must be our commitment and our mission. With malice towards none, to wipe every tear from every eye, it is then that we will, we will be both great and just and good. It is this unfulfilled mission that brings us to Texas today. It is the shared hope that binds us in common person, purpose. Two democracies, two histories, one partnership, one dream for a better tomorrow. Welcome, Prime Minister. Thank you very much. Thank you all.